Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're talking about the spell, Enemies Abound. <laughs> Bob, you're trying to kill me! Oh, my. Oh, no. This is the third level spell from Sailor Guide Everything. It's an enchantment spell. It's for bards, sorcerers, warlocks, and wizards. It's got a action cast time range of 120 feet, verbal chromatic components, concentration up to a minute. We're going to blast right through this. You reach into the mind of one creature you can see and force it to make an intelligence saving throw. Creature automatically succeeds if it's immune to being frightened. On a failed save, the target loses the ability to distinguish friend from foe, regarding all creatures it can see as enemies until the spell ends. Each time the target takes damage, you repeat the saving throw and the effect on itself on a success. Whenever the effective creature chooses another target, Creature as a target. It must choose the target at random from among the creatures it can see within range of the attack spell or other ability it's using. If the enemy provokes an attack opportunity from the affected creature, the creature must make the attack if able. Hmm. All right. This is a nifty little thing. This is a good, but it's nifty. Um, you know I like confusion, and I feel like this is a better version. So I like this one. My. I, I just don't know. I feel like there are going to be moments where this is pretty cool. And I think that is a bar that some spells just should probably need to pass to be able to go onto a sheet, right? It's like There needs to be a coolness factor to it. Some kind of neat little thing that's like, oh, sick, I got this guy to kill his friend. Which is sadistic and a little bit twisted, but that's what you're here for. I know. So that leaves this kind of spell. you got so excited about boiling a man in armor and throwing him into the ocean. Okay. <laughs> I'm not I got excited about thinking of a, a new thing you could do. That thing was a little bit sadistic. Am I wrong? I, well, we're talking about murder. I mean, this, this, <laughs> this is the only purpose for some of these spells. That's a good point. You know, I mean, you, yeah, you can use heat metal to cook food, but uh, you know, let's be honest. Is, is that what people are doing? No. You just, I think your examples go above and beyond for their cruelty factor. Sometimes, you know. <laughs> Uh, in this particular case, though, like, I'm just not that impressed. I think a lot of the time, this is the kind of thing you have to use. You have to use it in environments where, like, you they're, they're going to make an attack. Their life is in danger. And in that moment, they have to have mostly allies around them. And in that window, I'm like, you use this on the big bat around their minions? I guess and then it's like a saber die that isn't that good because it's just eating their action and not like shutting them down and giving you advantages to hit them and stuff like that when you start stacking this against things like hold person hold monster when you start stacking things in like hideous laughter even I think it starts to like have a lot of holes poked in it where I'm like sometimes it does nothing if there's some encounters where I can't cast like if there's one enemy this is just stone useless no valid yeah. text against a single enemy Against two or three enemies, they have to be next to each other, or they're still more likely to hit. Like, if you're against a, a, an ambush of ant kegs that are popping out of the ground everywhere around you, and you use this on one of them, it might go, okay, I'm going to hit the closest thing to me. I don't really care who's a friend or foe. I'm just going to eat everything agnostic of what's, you know, around me. So the windows where this is good are, like, pretty narrow. And in those windows, it's still going to be kind of suspect. There's still going to be rounds where it just doesn't do anything, and they hate you by accident anyway, and you're like, I should have just hideous laughter for a second for a first level spell. I mean, it, it's got a range of 120 feet. This can be like your your intro to the fight. So, all right, hang back, guys. I'm going to hit him with an enemy's abound first, and then we'll go clean up whatever's left. Uh, and all right, one other thing. It I doesn't think it compel has... it to attack, though. It does? So if you No, it just says if it were to attack, it chooses the target at random. So it has to already be in danger. It needs to think that if it doesn't fight, it is going to die. And if you just if you open a fight with something in the back line it, it, against it, creatures that aren't hostile towards it, but it can't distinguish if they are or not, the creatures aren't going to attack it. If on those turns those creatures move away from it, I don't see a big window where it's like, I, I see more of the likelihood outcome being, I'm not going to engage in this fight because I don't know what's happening. I'm scared. There's I'm I'm frightened, right? Like that's not literally what's written here, but it, it's implied by the frightened condition. I would argue more often inaction is the outcome of this over than attacking an ally randomly. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, like ready in action to attack something that damages it seems like a perfectly reasonable line for that to take, right? Well, no, all it knows is there. I mean, all right, so yeah, this isn't the opening move, maybe. Or it could be, you know, because uh, whatever. 
you were casting this. Your friends are shooting arrows at him and fire bolting or whatever. All it knows is there's a fight. I'm being attacked. These people around me are my enemies. I better start uh, hitting them. The, the inaction doesn't enter, enter in there. I think inaction does enter in there. I think it, it. this doesn't compel anything. This simply says if it's attacking, it's attacking at random. I think if a creature automatically perceives it is surrounded by enemies... Like if you're in a D and like you're if this is cast on you from an enemy backline, right? Yes. If some if an, if a villain casts enemies bound on you, what is your first thing you're going to do? Where the M can say you don't know if that a caster is a party member or is an enemy anymore. You have to role play what your character does does in that moment. Are you just going to be like, I guess I just throw fireballs out even though everyone around me is trying to kill me, or do you misty step away? Do you dash and try and hide? Do you take defensive actions that yeah. doesn't have you be outnumbered twelve to one? Yeah, I guess that's a thing. Like I think I think tactically this falls apart very quickly. And the windows where you would I think see it used is if it's surrounded, like rat in the corner kind of situation. If that's happening, you're probably gonna have a fair chance of hitting an ally. Yeah, I don't know. That's uh that might vary table to table. I don't know. That's definitely the case. It, there will be some DMs that want this to work, so you'll, you'll cast it, and the monster just goes, I'm idiot, hit friend, and just that occurs. And that's fine. I'm not saying that's a bad way to play. I'm just thinking, I don't think that's particularly tactical, nor do I think that's particularly, like, uh, very similitude is a word for when you're trying to replicate realism, but understand there's a layer between realism mm -hmm. and fantasy, right? I think that breaks the verisimilitude. I don't think that's that is something that I would expect a, an average monster with an int of eight or higher to do. At least one that values its life. If it's undead, absolutely this will lay into other undead. If you put this on, like, you know, a death knight, oh, yeah, it's cutting those zombies in half. But, like, that's not every encounter. That's not most encounters. Um. All right, well, yeah, your mileage may vary on that. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention that I like is that this is an intelligent saving throw, which uh, I don't, we don't see too many of those, do we? Not really. This does definitely work on dumber idiots. So That's there you right. got some I'm incentive. Thinking like, you know, your barbarians and fighters that took that as a dump stat, then uh, yeah, they can do a lot of damage in their uh, their own ranks if it yeah. works out that way. If it works if out they that way, to. yes. Definitely the the braver the vil or the braver the villain, the better this will be. Right, big dumb idiot hill giants that think they're the king of the world probably will just be like, I can't die. Beat up friends. Sure, there will be windows where that is a valid thing that will occur. Now, do you take a spell that is only good in those windows against those creatures? Again, if it's the single hill giant, nothing. This does nothing at all. Oh, no, if you're no. against multiples of hill giants, maybe this is good. And if you're against non-hill giants, this might just do nothing. Or just be, not necessarily do nothing, but be a worse version of cheaper effects. Like hideous laughter. Um, Yeah, I think I'd take it at least once just to, just to give it a test run. I gotta know. That's fair. I think this spell will be mediocre. And I think that the encounters where it'll do its cool thing, you will genuinely really enjoy. And that probably keeps it at three territory for me. Like it is a saber die that can be powerful. It can have some moments where like, you know, an enemy disengages, it makes a reaction attack against that thing. Cause it's violent and vicious like a knoll. And then it chases it down and tries to eat its buddies. And they're all trying to peel it off. Maybe they just opt to kill it instead of having to deal with it. Right. There could be genuinely powerful things that happen here. I just think the average use case is not going to be that. I think the average use case is going to rot on your character sheet. You're going to go five or six sessions and never cast it. Did you give this a three, you said? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I was going to give it a three. Um, mostly because this is a level three spell, and you have a lot of options here. You do. There's way more powerful things than this. I think there's yeah. more powerful lower level things than this. But at the ceiling of this spell is a lot better than the ceiling on those other spells, like Hideous Laughter, even things like Banishment. The ceiling on Enemies Bound is two enemies fight to the death. Like, And that's way better than putting one in the pocket damage. Um, all right. Well, there you go. That was Enemies Abound. Um, let us know what you think down in the comments. I think it's a lot of fun. And there's a lot um, of interesting conversations about this one, too. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. 
And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of The Spell, and other fun things.